Do you know what types of things can be protected by U.S. copyrights? Hello and welcome. This is private U.S. copyright lawyer Eric Kelly. This video will go over eight different categories of creative works that may be protected by U.S. copyrights and, that, and these eight categories are set forth, spelled out, in a particular U.S. copyright law, a particular U.S. federal statutory law. As some of these categories are broad, I will also show a bunch of particular examples for some of these broad categories of creative works that may be protected by U.S. copyrights. Note, I also have another July 2023 video on nine categories of things that U.S. copyrights generally do not protect. This video on what can be protected and that other video on what cannot be protected complement each other. And together, these videos should help someone to understand what can and what cannot be protected by U.S. copyrights. Also note, this video is current at least as of July 2023. The law could change in the future. Okay, let's get into this video. The U.S. federal law noted in the introduction is called or known as Title 17 of the United States Code, Section 102, Subpart A, and is generally abbreviated as shown here on your screen. This particular U.S. federal statutory law sets forth eight categories of different types of creative works that may generally be protected by U.S. copyrights. If you enter 17 U.S.C. Section 102 Subpart A into most any internet browser search engine like Google, you can quickly find and see the actual language for this particular law. So here you are now seeing the actual language for this law, including these eight categories of different types of creative works that may generally be protected by U.S. copyrights. So we have number one, literary works for the first category, musical works including any accompanying words that is lyrics for the second category, the third category is for dramatic works including any accompanying music, the fourth category is for pantomimes and or choreographic works, the fifth category is for pictorial, graphic, and or sculptural works. The sixth category is for motion pictures and or audiovisual works. The seventh category is for sound recordings. And the eighth and final category is for architectural works. Next, we'll show some specific examples of various types of creative works for these eight categories of different types of creative works that may generally be protected by U.S. copyrights. The first category is for literary works. Literary works are generally going to be creative works consisting of many words. Examples of various literary works that may be protected by U.S. copyrights can include all kinds of written works of fic fiction, written fiction, and sometimes aspects of written nonfiction. However, nonfiction can be a little bit trickier to protect by U.S. copyright law because U.S. copyright law generally does not protect facts, and nonfiction generally is at least mostly or largely of facts. Some examples of various literary works that may be protected by U.S. copyrights can include things like short stories or things like novels, books in general, particularly fiction books. Additionally, it could include poems, a poem book, a book of poetry. Note this first category of literary works can also include things like scripts, screen, screenplays, or the like. Also note this first category of literary works can also include written music, such as lyrics. However, note that scripts, screenplays, and or lyrics or things of that nature, depending upon how they are expressed, such as in writing or as in a sound recording or as part of an audio visual work, can also fit into some of these other categories that we're going to be talking about. The second category of creative works that can generally be protected by U.S. copyrights is for musical works, including any accompanying words of lyrics. So things like music, songs, the musical notes, their arrangement, and the like for a particular song, the lyrics of a song, all of these things are aspects of a musical work are capable of being protected by U.S. copyrights. And we often sum up these various aspects of music, such as the notes, arrangement, the lyrics, and or the like, by a phrase or a term that we use in U.S. copyright law referred to as a musical composition. And musical compositions may exist in different forms or formats, such as in a written form, in a sound recording form, and or in a video recorded form. Also note the second category for music often can have some overlap with some of the other categories here because music 
maybe used by itself, which may place it into the second category, or music can often be used with dramatic works, which is the third category, or music can be used in the sixth category for audiovisual works, or music can be expressed in sound recordings, which is the seventh category. So this second category for music can overlap with some of these other categories that we're going to be discussing here. The third category of creative works that can generally be protected by U.S. copyrights is for dramatic works, including any accompanying music. Dramatic works may include things like plays, musicals, operas, and or the like, basically things that you would watch or see at a theater. However, dramatic works can also include dramas that you would see on TV, like in a series, television series format, or something you'd see in a movie format, whether or not you see it on the big screen or you watch it at home. Depending upon how the given dramatic work is expressed, this third category may overlap with some of the other categories we're discussing in this video, just like we saw with music for the second category. For example, if the, if the dramatic work is expressed in words, then the dramatic work may be a literary work of the first category, and that could be the case for written scripts and or written screenplays. For, ex for example, if the dramatic work is expressed in an audiovisual format, such as a video or motion picture or movie, then the dramatic work may fall into the sixth category. For example, if the dramatic work is expressed in a sound recording format, then the dramatic work may fall into the seventh category. And dramatic works often may contain or utilize music, so the third category for dramatic works may also overlap with the second category for musical works. The fourth category of creative works that can generally be protected by U.S. copyrights is for pantomimes and or choreographic works. However, note that the protected choreography is not limited to merely dance choreography, but generally applies to any type of choreographed sequence, such as but not limited to like an action sequence, a fight scene, and or the like. The fifth category of creative works that can generally be protected by U.S. copyrights is for pictorial, graphic, and or sculptural works. You could say that this fifth category is for protecting artwork, or more specifically, for protecting two-dimensional and or three-dimensional 2D and or 3D artwork. Examples in this fifth category may include artwork, basically 2D and or 3D, two-dimensional and or three-dimensional artwork. So things like paintings, certainly drawings, paintings, drawings, and or the like. Basically, any type of visual, two-dimensional, static, and non-moving art might fall into this fifth category. So also included in this fifth category are photos, photographs, including digital photos, digital photographs. Photos are basically pictorial works, and you could say they are a subtype of two-dimensional, 2D, static, and non-moving art, which would be included in this fifth category. Also included in this fifth category are three-dimensional, 3D, non-functional artwork, which could include things like sculptures. And note that sculptures need not be handmade. For example, a given sculpture could be designed by a human using some type of 3D, three-dimensional modeling software, and then 3D printed. And the resulting 3D printed object, as long as it's generally non-functional, may be an example of a sculpture capable of being protected by U.S. copyright assuming that the 3D printed object was original, creative, and non-functional. Another example of, of often qualifying sculptures, that is sculptures that would qualify for U.S. copyright protection, includes non-functional jewelry. Also note the reason I, I'm distinguishing between non-functional 3D or three-dimensional objects versus ut utilitarian functional three-dimensional objects like a hammer or tools or machines is that those functional, utilitarian functional 3D objects, such as the hammer, tools, or machines, generally do not qualify for U.S. copyright protection. Rather, it's only the non-functional artistic 3D three-dimensional objects like sculptures and non-functional jewelry that are capable of being protected by U.S. copyrights, uh, as in this fifth category here. Non-functional jewelry that often is protected by U.S. copyright include things like bracelets, necklaces, earrings, rings, brooches, pendants, anklets, and or the like. Whereas functional jewelry might include things like wrist and pocket watches, which would not be protected by U.S. copyright because they are functional objects. The sixth category of creative works that can generally be protected by U.S. copyrights is for motion pictures, movies, audiovisual works, videos, and sometimes presentations like, like a digital slide presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, or the like. 
An audiovisual work is generally defined as a work of a series of related images, together with any accompanying sounds and or music, if any, that generally requires the use of some equipment for one to view, see, and or hear that particular audiovisual work. So you need usually a computer, a projector, like a phone, laptop, tablet device, whatever. You need some kind of device to basically watch and or hear the audiovisual work. So given that definition for an audiovisual work, movies, motion pictures, videos, and sometimes presentations, these, those could all be basically a subtype uh, of an audiovisual work. So the audiovisual work might be the broader term, and then movies, motion pictures, videos, and sometimes presentations might be subcategories or fall under that broader term of audiovisual work. So the videos that content creators and influencers often make on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, or whatever platform, those videos generally fall into this sixth category for types of creative works that can be protected by U.S. copyrights. Because such videos from content creators basically have a copyright attached to them that's generally going to be owned by the content creator, that's why when a content creator uploads one of their videos for publication on a given platform, the content creator has to grant a license for the platform to be able to use and publish that uploaded video on that platform without the platform infringing the content creator's copyright in their video. That grant of a license is all part of that legalese that no one ever reads but they agree to by virtue of using the given platform. The seventh category of creative works that can generally be protected by U.S. copyrights is for sound recordings. Sound recordings can of course include, you know, things like music, songs, musical compositions with or without lyrics, but sound recordings can also include non-musical types of sound recordings. For example, audio-only recorded podcasts would be an example of a sound recording that would typically qualify for U.S. copyright protection under the seventh category. Similarly, audiobooks are another example of sound recordings that would fall into the seventh category. Even like nature, natural, weather, and or animal sounds that might be recorded into a sound recording might qualify for U.S. copyright protection, but such sound recordings might be limited to only to the selection, coordination, and or arrangement of such naturally occurring sounds that, get, that are recorded. And the reason that sound recordings and natural sounds only extends to the selection, coordination, and arrangement of those sounds is that copyright protection only extends to, to what a human creativity comes up with. That is a natural occurring sound because it is not created from a human is not by itself eligible for U.S. copyright protection. The eighth and final category of creative works that can generally be protected by U.S. copyrights is for architectural works. Examples in this eighth category may include things like architectural drawings, architectural renderings, architectural blueprints, things of that nature. Those are going to be protected in this eighth category under U.S. copyright law. However, note that once a given building is built and it exists, it's generally perfectly fine for some stranger to photo, photograph, film, or video that building, including if that building is a home, if the stranger is doing so from a public location. And further, there is no need to obtain permission from the building's owners and or tenants for the stranger to take such photos or video of that building. Additionally, such photos or videos of the building, as long as they're taken from a public location, do not infringe the copyright in the arch architectural works that depicts that building. This particular rule is actually a U.S. federal law that has set forth that Title 17 of the United States Code, Section 120. Okay, so I've gone through these eight different categories of creative works that may generally be protected by U.S. copyrights pursuant to this particular law of Title 17 of the United States Code, Section 102, Subpart A. Now, if you are a creative person, if you're a content creator, an influencer, or, you know, someone of that nature, you really want to be thinking about any of the creative works that you could be making and which of those might be protected by U.S. copyright. If you want to possibly monetize your creative works, license your creative works, and or generally control who uses and or builds off of your creative works, then you really should be thinking about seeking to register your copyrights in your creative works at the U.S. Copyright Office, as having a U.S. registered copyright provides you with the most protections for your creative works and gives you the most flexibility of what you can do with your creative works. And depending upon what type of creative works you are generating and are creating, there may be other important steps to take. For example, if you're generating songs or music, then you likely will also want to register your songs or music with the various what are called performing rights organizations, also known as PROS, P-R-O. 
so that when your song or music is played and or streamed, you're then being in a position to receive a royalty, which is basically a payment for such use of your songs. And also don't forget to watch my other July 2023 copyright video on the nine categories of things that US copyrights generally do not protect. This video on what can be protected and that other video of mine on what cannot be pr protected together complement each other. So those two videos work together and help, help someone to understand what can and what cannot be protected by US copyrights. For example, in that other July 2023 copyright video of mine, I go over how copyright generally protects creative expression, but not the ideas contained in that expression. For example, in this video, I noted that photos may fall into the fifth category of things that may protect may be protected by U.S. copyrights. Photos are generally something that can be protected by U.S. copyright law. A photo is an example of a type of medium of expression. Other types of medium of expression could be like a movie or a literary work. So while a given photo may be protected from un unauthorized copying, any ideas conveyed in that photo are not protected by U.S. copyright law. For example, if a photo were to show some hack for folding clothes as an example, that hack depicted in the photo could be used by others without permission of the copyright owner in that photo. But others may not copy that photo without permission of the copyright owner of that photo. That's what I mean when I say a photo may be protected by US copyright law, by US copyright law but the idea depicted in the photo is not protected by US copyright law. Okay, to wrap up this video, this has been private U.S. copyright attorney Eric Kelly. And I do work with clients from all over the United States and from all over the world. And in addition to being a copyright attorney, I'm also a trademark and patent attorney. And copyrights deal with protecting creative works, whereas trademarks deal with protecting branding. And lastly, patents deal with protecting new and non-obvious inventions, so basically new and non-obvious products. And then lastly here, you can see some contact information for me, my phone number, and some emails for me if you want to reach out to me regarding various intellectual property matters. Thank you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to help me reach others about intellectual property matters such as copyright, trademark, and or patent matters. And here's some of my suggested videos on U.S. copyright issues. Thank you.